So now we come to the third elaboration on the same time period, which is the 12 years ending in 2080 here in Matthew, signified by Egertaisetai Gar Ethnos Epi Ethnos, and will rise nation against nation, meaning rise to war. And it's real important that it's telling you when so that you know what these words mean because by themselves these words are kind of ambiguous. What do you mean nation rises against nation? In what way? How? Nations are always rising against nations. So this gives you a specific context and if you were living at the time you'd really need to know that so you could get out of Dodge. But even later or earlier, it gives you a specific context. Well, later, because it's not history until it's happened. Now we can look back on it and say, oh, this is what Christ meant when he said nation rises against nation. Not that it only applies to that time period, but that's what he means by the words he says as a trend. In other words, the world was fragmented, the Western world where the Bible was, it's all about the Bible, you know, the kidnapping and freeing up of the Bible. The whole idea of these wars was to kidnap the Bible, as we're going to see, because it gets really, the kidnapping starts here. Okay? So you're getting a specific context of history for these words, so that you know what the words mean. Because otherwise you're saying, well, nations rise against nations, that happens all the time. Yeah. But he's not talking about just all the time. He's talking about a specific type. And with the meter, you know what type. Especially for us afterwards. Because he knew that the rapture wasn't going to occur right away. That's why he's got this timeline. Okay? So now we can look back to the period ending 280 AD and know exactly what these words mean. That's the point. But it's not only Matthew that's tagging them. As we saw in previous episode. Okay, this section is Luke's for the same time period, and it ends at 283. And I already showed you by, you know, talking about it. I didn't take you to the actual Greek. But in the Greek, this period in Ephesians is the same. Anakephaleostaste, which is the longest word in the Bible. That's why I learned how to say it. To bring under one head. That one head is going to be Diocletian. That's why Paul uses that word there. To bring under one head all things in, under the earth and all things in heaven. All things in heaven and all things under the earth. That's what Diocletian, that was his whole platform. This is what Diocletian is known for. This is why Diocletian rose to power. This is what Diocletian aimed to do. To bring everything under himself. Because he was believing a gypsy prophecy he got when he was like 17 about when he killed a boar, the last name of the guy who was guarding the Caesar's son, the Caesars, the sons of, of uh, Carus. If he killed a boar, killed the guardian, then he would become rich and famous. That's what the, the lady told him when he was a kid. And you find that in the Diocletian, the persecution of Diocletian, or the Diocletian persecution, it's a book that was printed in 1876. And in my Ephesians one reparsed okay you can get that link direct okay because I found it online and I linked it alright so signs and wonders is the added text in Luke to complement what this nation rises against nation means for the same time period so now you can go back in history and look up what so-called, what people thought, this is really important, what people thought then were signs and wonders. Diocletian made a big deal of that because what Diocletian would do to bring Rome together and end the wars was to create a religion, a sort of a new version of the Roman religion around himself and what would history now calls the Tetrarchy. He didn't use that term. He created a religion out of it. Well, because people were willing to, suddenly, with all this nation rising against nation, they were looking up. And so he created a new version of Roman paganism, 
for them to look up to and he turned himself into a, like a god and he gave himself a name I forget which one I think it was after Jupiter he gave himself a name of a god and then he gave his co-ruler because he set up co-rulers he gave his co-ruler Maximian I think he called him Hercules okay in other words they set themselves up to be ruling on behalf of the gods yes signs and wonders see how relevant this text is to the time therefore when you read the text in the Bible at, in a generic sense you can say okay you mean that kind of signs and wonders that was happening around Diocletian you mean that kind of nation against nation as was happening during the crisis of the third century so now you have a very specific understanding of what Bible's talking about as something that's going to occur again it's not vague you know, people are always complaining, especially atheists and agnostics, and I empathize with them all. Well, the Bible's so vague. How do you can make a prophecy mean anything? Well, you see how that's not true anymore. All along, we had the information to know exactly what was meant, and we didn't know it. It's in the meter. It's because the meter is tied to a specific time period, and they interlock. This is Matthew 24. This is Luke. 21, written 28 years later, elaborating on the same time period. Now why is the, are these the words being added by Luke versus Mar Matthew? I don't know. It would have had some relevance to the people who got it at the time. But we can benefit from it by adding them up. That's what I'm trying to show you. It's like tic-tac-toe. See, here's an X, and here's an X. Okay? Tic-tac-toe is where you have X's and O's. And if you get them all going into the same direction, then you win. Okay, well, if you're going to win at Bible interpretation, this is how you do it. And see how specific it is. We got a lot of history preserved about what happened during this time. So it's real painstaking, but at the same time, it's not difficult to understand what this text means once you know that history covered. Okay? And then again, in Ephesians, adding to it, which either came out just before or just after, or, co or coterminous with Luke, is talking about the same thing. Anakephaleostaste, to bring under one head, all of what's in the heavens and all of what's on earth. That was exactly Diocletian's platform. And since we have history about Diocletian and his platform preserved, we can know that. So we can know what Ephesians 1, 10 means. Because look, just look at the words by themselves. To bring under one hand everything in heaven and on earth. What does that mean? It's something that puts you to sleep in the pew. Okay, but obviously that's not putting you to sleep now. Oh, he's predicting the exact platform of Diocletian. Yeah, but it's not only Diocletian he's predicting. It's a trend of history that starts with him. To bring everything under one head in heaven and in earth. That trend was what Constantine would adopt. That trend is going on right now in Russia and in the White House. That's what they seek to do. So it's real important that God marked it with a specific person and a specific time because, honey, that's repeating right now as I talk. That's what they want to do. There is a bid to make a USSA theologically. And, of course, it's a little difficult to do that because, you know, the Christians themselves are like a minority. How are they going to overthrow the government? Well, right now they're staffing positions in the executive branch with seven mountains people and in third Rome aka Russia the Russian Orthodox are FSB that's the name of the security arm used to be called Cheka then it became the NKVD I think that's what they called it and then it became I forget they've, they've given themselves KGB now they're called FSB all right that's where Putin came from. That's his background. 
that's how he got his career was as a, a Soviet internal affairs agent okay so now they're linking theologically as I talk for the same purpose as Diocletian back in 283 AD which is where this ends in Matthew in Luke adding to Matthew three years later ending that black period is the same period that overlaps this one in Matthew okay so you carry it out for the next three syllables Estai meaning to be la okay lestai now la in Greek by itself doesn't really have much of a meaning but estai to be will be okay that's kind of important that was what Diocletian wanted he wanted to be he wanted to be this guy that all the signs and wonders and he would be the he would be the godlike figure that everybody would bow to and that would unite Rome. Okay? It was very studied, it was very specific, he was very good at it. And all you have to do is read up on Diocletian to know what I'm talking about. And then you look back at these words and say, Wow, it's really specific about him. Yeah. That's how you know what the words mean in scripture. That's why it's here. That's why the meter matters. To take all the, the fuzz ball. I mean, you just read this. And will be wonders and in the heaven signs great will be. What does that mean? Fuzz ball. Yeah, but not in scripture. It's not fuzz ball. And that's why you know. Because of the meter. See? I complained to God about this since I was a kid. All these words are just fuzzball words. I have no idea what you just said. It's just so much syrup. And so now that I'm 64, I see the meaning. Hopefully you can too and save yourself a lot of angst and time. All right, so now we're up to uh, Mark. Mark is ending this at 246, which is 276 AD. And he's ending this at 268, which is 298 AD. So this line is from 276 to 298. And look at what it says. Okay? First, though, we got to go to it's not the end. Okay? This is verse 7 in Mark 13, so you can follow it in English if the Greek drives you nuts. And must happen, all the above must happen. Whoops. Oh, no. Okay. Must happen. That's the word for happen. But, not yet, the end. They, genestai, al, it's really Allah, but for a vowel, you do a apostrophe. Upo! Upo! Your kids are sitting in the back of the car, and you're trying to drive to Disneyland, and they keep saying, Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And you say, Upo! Not yet. Upo! U means no. Po means yet. To telos. The end. Must come about, but... Not yet the end. You'll know that's 276 AD. That's in the middle of the crisis of the third century. Okay, see, look. Nation will rise against nation. That's 12 years ending in 280. Mark is being very clever, and before the end of 280, get that? He's saying it's not the end. You see the wit? It's not, this isn't 250. This is 246. It's not yet the end. That is in Matthew. You got that? Isn't that cute? And so he's inserting this. All the above things about how they're going to take you and kill you and blah, 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 wars. It's not yet the end. Now, Christ does say that same thing later in Matthew. 
or actually right right up here in Matthew. Lupo es tintotelas. A lupo, but not yet the end. Okay, so you see he's, he's quoting, quoting, quoting Matthew up here. But the text in Matthew is earlier. So he's waiting, Mark is waiting until you get to, he's, he's lining his phrase, not yet the end, with that one. Because it's going to seem like the end to them. Nation rising against nation. Oh, maybe Christ will come back. Because that was the popular argument at the time. They were saying that since 217 AD. Because they thought when Rome was a thousand years old, because they thought Rome was born 453 BC, it was really 750. I mean, 753 BC they thought was Rome's birth. It was really 750. But they were always used in 753. And thought, oh, we're coming up on the year 1000 of Rome's existence. So the, so the Lord's coming back. No, Upo, not the end. Upo. Al Upo es No, it's not the end yet. Not the end. Not, 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 not. So you see, Mark moved the text to align with this in Matthew. To stress the fact that it's going to seem like the end, but it's not. Because the people who are going to be alive during that time highlighted in black are going to be thinking, oh, it's got to be the end. It's got to be the end. They will have forgotten to read like I did. They will have forgotten to read the text that's just before it. Okay? So he's placing it a little bit down to align with nation rising against nation. And all these things must happen, but not yet the end. And his meter is also not yet the end because up here it's 280. Okay. And here it's 276. Ha ha. Alright. And then he repeats the text that he had just finished aligning with the... He aligns the Matthew text with this. And then he goes to repeat it with four syllables to go. So see, look, this is so cute. Egertesetai. And what do we have here? Egertesetai. That takes you to 280 in Mark. You see that? See, it's ending at 276. Four more syllables. So he is literally bracketing the Matthew phrase that's earlier okay with it's not the end he's stressing that it's not the end and then he like on the other side of the 280 here in Matthew so here's the 280 in Matthew it ends with ethnos it begins with et, et, okay but he's putting it so that it brackets it at the end see the play that he's making he's making a play on the word end it's not the end so he makes the word end not be at the same end as it is in Matthew. And then he takes the word in Matthew that begins that period and he makes it end at 280 just like it does in Matthew. Now hopefully you're getting something out of this. What you should be getting out of this is, oh my God, he's counting the syllables in Matthew. And he's looking at the same text and he's bracketing his text to repeat the same text in Matthew in his own, so it comes at the end, but the word end is in the middle. So then what do we know? We know we have the real words of Matthew that Matthew actually first wrote. And in Mark, we know we have the real words that Mark wrote. Because this kind of stuff has to be deliberate. It's obviously witty, and it's obviously meaningful to stick the word end in the middle to stress the fact that no, it's not the end, it's the middle. You get that pun? Because Revelation's going to make a big pun out of this. Alright, the fact that Mark puts it, it, the word end in the middle. And then he brackets the word 
at the, the 280 mark, he brackets it to end with the same word that, that, that Matthew used in the beginning. Yeah. So could you ask for more proof that this was a deliberate mapping of words and meter to a specific time that is exactly characterized by the words? I'll let you think about that. I'm going to get some water. <laughs>